All right, uh, we're back for the uh, second part of teaching basics. This is how to teach articulation at the basic level. And there are two things that are important to me in basic uh, articulation. One is how the tongue touches the reed. It's very important for the correct sound or the best sound to have the tongue touch the reed in the best way, which is, in my mind, definitely tip to tip. The tip of the tongue or the very edge of the tongue on the very tip or edge of the reed. This way. If I touch too much reed, this is a real problem. Now I've got too much tongue touching too much reed. This destroy this goes in the against the true principle that you should touch as little reed with as little tongue as humanly possible. So I usually say it as little read with as little tongue as possible. Uh, and so the best way to do that, in my mind, is the tip to tip. So tip to tip sounds like this. Actually, let me play this high because when it's high, you can really tell if it's clean or not. Now, if I touch too much read, You'll hear this dead spot. I call it a dead spot. It's like a, uh, like a piece of junk in the front of every note. It's kind of a little low. Not cool. I've heard that so... I've heard students who have such a problem with that that you can hear it over the whole band at, at a concert. It's very distracting. And it's certainly distracting from a personal performance. I highly recommend that we tongue tip to tip. And I think this is a good exercise. If we tongue quarter notes up around G, A, B, C, this is where we can really tell. Versus. Definitely a problem. So tip to tip is our first watchword. The second watchword for basic tonguing is up and down. The tongue should move up and down to the reed, not back and forth. Now if the reed move if the reed if the tongue pulls back into the throat, forward to hit the reed, back into the throat, forward to hit the reed, there are several problems with this. First of all, this is slow, too much motion, a lot of wasted motion. Second, it's heavy. It's going to come back and hit hard. And third, it's impossible to come back and have a consistent placement. If you want to feel to totally uncoordinated, see if you can do it with your finger. Come back and touch exactly the same spot each time. <laughs> oh, gosh. You feel like a total spastic. I'm sorry. Don't worry. It's normal. But trying to touch the same way twice is ridiculous. I think your tongue has the same problem. You must not be moving back and forth. The front of the tongue moves up and down. So in other words, here's the reed, here's the tongue, it's moving very small amount. Because of this process again being invisible, we have to do everything we can to externalize. So this is what I do when I'm teaching on students as I use things like this to illustrate what's going on in there. Since they can't see when I'm playing. So if my tongue is going, this is a, a useful thing in teaching, by the way. If my tongue is going back and forth too much, watch the movement in my throat. Tongue's going back into the mouth and forward. Now, if I only do a little too much movement, this is usually kind of a combination of up and down and back and forth. The movement moves more up in here. Hopefully that's coming through. If I do it correctly, now the tongue's staying right in the front of the mouth. Staying right in the front and just going up and down. You don't see any movement here in the throat coordinated to the tongue. Or. Or. So that external indicator where I'm seeing too much movement in the throat is an incredibly valuable teaching tool because then I can see externally that the student's not moving right. Sometimes that can, that can be uh, uh, 
that can indicate that there may be an anchor tonguing problem as well. Anchor tonguing is when we take the tip of the tongue, anchor it on the bottom teeth. Tongue moves like this. This will cause throat motions too. <clears throat> it's got several problems. First of all, I I I can't touch as as I can't touch as little reed with as little tongue as possible. I may have some effects of dead spots because I can't touch, usually because of the way the tongue is angled and I'm way back, touching the reed pillar back here, I'm not going to be able to obey that principle. And second, every time I move my tongue, it's changing my oral cavity. My oral cavity is a big part of tone and intonation, and I don't want to be changing that every time my tongue. I think of my tongue as a two-part mechanism. There's a hinge in the middle, and the front part moves up and down for tonguing, and the back part moves up and down for controlling the oral cavity voicing. So I don't want to mix the two up and do both at the same time. Uh, so I really try to help my students avoid anchor tonguing, and I try to help them avoid having the tongue going back and forth, try to get them going up and down so it just touches the reed, comes back slightly, touches the reed, comes back slightly, touches the reed. Probably doesn't come back more than an eighth of an inch. This is going to be faster, lighter, and far more consistent. So when I'm teaching the basic tonguing principles, sorry, I've got this light so you can see my neck, and then I keep getting in the way of it so you get a shadow. But uh, the things that I want to teach then are tip to tip, and my external indicator is what I can hear. Do I hear dead spots, or do I hear it clean? And then I want up and down. And my external indicator for that is the throat motion. And I want this to have no motion coordinated to the tongue. I think that probably wraps that up well enough. So there's uh, just a little bit on basics of teaching the, the articulation initially to a student. Thank you.